Here you go. Pad Thai, no peanuts. Does it have peanut oil? I'm not sure. Everyone keep an eye on Howard in case he starts to swell up. Since it's not bee season, you can have my epinephrine. Are there any chopsticks? You don't need chopsticks. This is Thai food. Here we go. Thailand has had the fork since the latter half of the 19th century. Interestingly, they don't actually put the fork in their mouth. They use it to put the food on a spoon, which then goes into their mouth. Ask him for a napkin. I dare you. I'll get it. Do I look puffy? I feel puffy. Hey, Leonard. Oh, hi, Penny. Am I interrupting? No. You're not swelling, Howard. No, no. Look at my fingers. They're like Vienna sausages. Sounds like you have company. They're not going anywhere. <sighs> So you're coming home from work. That's great. How was work? Well, you know, it's a cheesecake factory. People order cheesecake and I bring it to them. So you kind of act as like a carbohydrate delivery system. Yeah, call it whatever you want. I get minimum wage. Yeah. Um, anyways, I was wondering if you could help me out with something. I'm yes. kind of... Oh. Okay, great. I'm, I'm having some furniture delivered tomorrow and I may not be here, so... Oh. Hello. I'm sorry? Haven't you ever been told how beautiful you are in flawless Russian? No, I haven't. Get used to it. Yeah, I probably won't. But... Hey, Sheldon. Hi. Hey, Raj. Still not talking to me, huh? Don't take it personally. It's his pathology. He can't talk to women. He can't talk to attractive women, or in your case, a cheesecake-scented goddess. So, there's gonna be some furniture delivered? Yeah, yeah. If it gets here and I'm not here tomorrow, could you just uh, sign for it and have them put them in my apartment? Yeah, no problem. Great. Here's my spare key. Thank you. Honey, wait. Yeah? Um... <laughs> if you don't have any other plans, do you want to join us for Thai food and a Superman movie marathon? A marathon? Wow, how many Superman movies are there? You're kidding, right? <laughs> You know, I do like the one where Lois Lane falls from the helicopter and Superman swooshes down and catches her. Which one was that? One. <laughs> you realize that scene was rife with scientific inaccuracy. Yes, I know. Men can't fly. No, no. Let's assume that they can. <laughs> Lois Lane is falling, accelerating at an initial rate of 32 feet per second per second. Superman swoops down to save her by reaching out two arms of steel. Miss Lane, who is now traveling at approximately 120 miles an hour, hits them and is immediately sliced into three equal pieces. Unless Superman matches her speed and decelerates. In what space, sir? In what space? She's two feet above the ground. You know, frankly, if he really loved her, he'd let her hit the pavement. It'd be a more merciful death. Excuse me, your entire argument is predicated on the assumption that Superman's flight is a feat of strength. Are you listening to yourself? It is well established that Superman's flight is a feat of strength. It is an extension of his ability to leap tall buildings, an ability he derives from exposure to Earth's yellow sun. Yeah, and you don't have a problem with that? How does he fly at night? Uh, a combination of the moon's solar reflection and the energy storage capacity of Kryptonian skin cells. <laughs> I have 2,600 comic books in there. I challenge you to find a single reference to Kryptonian skin cells. Challenge accepted. We're locked out. Also, the pretty girl left. <laughs> All right, just a few more feet and... Here we are, gentlemen. The Gates of Elzebub. Good oh. lord. Don't panic. This is what the last 97 hours have been about. Stay frosty. There's a horde of armed goblins on the other side of that gate guarding the Sword of Azeroth. Warriors, unsheath your weapons. Magic wielders, raise your wands. Lock and load. Raj, blow the gates. Blowing the gates. Control, shift, B. Prehensile, I'll swat him off. I got him, Leonard. Tonight I spice my mead with goblin blood. Raj, nothing to trap the flanking us. Oh, he's got me. Sheldon, he's got Raj. Use your sleep spell. Sheldon. Sheldon. I've got the sword of Azeroth. Look at the sword, Sheldon. Help Raj. There is no more Sheldon. I am the sword master. Leonard, look out. Damn it, no, we're dying here. Goodbye, peasants.
Yes. Master teleported. He's selling the sword of Azeroth on eBay. You betrayed us for money? Who are you? I'm a rogue night elf. Don't you people read character descriptions? <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Somebody just click buy it now. I am the sword master! You know, I've been thinking about time travel again. Why, did you hit a roadblock with invisibility? <laughs> Put it on the back burner. Anyway, it occurs to me, if I ever did perfect a time machine, I would just go into the past and give it to myself, thus eliminating the need for me to invent it in the first place. Interesting. Yeah, it really takes the pressure off. <laughs> Sounds like a breakthrough. Should I call Science Magazine and tell them to hold the cover? It's time travel, Leonard. I will have already done that. And I guess congratulations are in order. No, congratulations will have been in order. You know, I'm not going to enjoy this party. I know, I'm familiar with you. The last apartment party, Professor Finkelday cornered me and talked about spelunking for 45 minutes. Yes, I was there. You know what's interesting about caves, Leonard? What? Nothing. <laughs> well, then we'll avoid Finkelday, we'll meet the new department head, congratulate him, shake his hand and go. How's this? Pleased to meet you, Dr. Gablehauser. How fortunate for you that the university has chosen to hire you, despite the fact that you've done no original research in 25 years, and instead have written a series of popular books that reduce the great concepts of science to a series of anecdotes, each one dumbed down to accommodate the duration of an average bowel movement. <laughs> Mahalo. Mahalo's a nice touch. <laughs> You know, there are only eight consonants in the Hawaiian language. Interesting. You should lead with that. Oh, God, look at this buffet. I love America. You don't have buffets in India? Of course, but it's all Indian food. You can't find a bagel in Mumbai to save your life. Shmear me. Well, here's an interesting turn of events. What? Howard brought a date? A well, plausible explanation is that his work in robotics has made an amazing leap forward. <laughs> hey, what up, science bitches? <laughs> May I introduce my special lady friend, Summer? Howard, I told you, touching's extra. Right, Summer. Here comes our new boss. Be polite. Hi, fellas. Eric Gablehauser. Howard Wallowitz. Howard, <laughs> nice to meet you. And you are? An actual real scientist. <laughs> How was that? I can't believe he fired me. Well, you did call him a glorified high school science teacher whose last successful experiment was lighting his own farts. In my defense, I preface that by saying, with all due respect. All right, I'm moving my infantry division augmented by a battalion of orcs from Lord of the Rings. We flank the Tennessee Volunteers, and the North once again wins the Battle of Gettysburg. Not so fast. Remember, the South still has two infantry divisions, plus Superman and Godzilla. No, 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 no. Orcs are magic. Superman is vulnerable to magic. Not to mention, you already lost Godzilla to the Illinois Cavalry and Hulk. Why don't you just have Robert E. Lee charge the line with Shiva and Ganesh? Are right, you guys ready to order? Hang on, honey. Shiva and Ganesh? The Hindu gods against the entire Union army? And orcs. I'll be back. Excuse me. Ganesh is the remover of obstacles and Shiva is the destroyer. When the smoke clears, Abraham Lincoln will be speaking Hindi and drinking mint juleps. All right, my boss says you have to either order or leave and never come back. What do you recommend for someone who worked up a man-sized appetite from a morning of weight training and cardio funk? A shower. I'll take the heart smart platter. All right, thank you. And Sheldon? We don't eat here. I don't know what's good. Well, it's all good. Statistically unlikely. Just get a hamburger. You like hamburgers. I like the hamburgers where we usually have hamburgers. You can't make the assumption that I like the hamburgers here. <laughs> I'm sorry. Give him a hamburger. All right, which one? The classic burger, the ranch house burger, the barbecue burger, or the Kobe burger? Can't we just go to Big Boy? They only have one burger, the Big Boy. Barbecue burgers like the big boy. Excuse me, in a world that already includes a big boy, why would I settle for something like a big boy? Because you are not to act big boy. 
Fine, I'll have the barbecue burger. Make it two. Waitresses don't yell at you at Big Boy. Hey, Leonard. Hi, guys. Hey. Hi, Leslie. I didn't know you ate here. We don't. This is a disturbing aberration. <laughs> Leslie, uh, this is Penny. She lives across the hall from Sheldon and me. And walks in quiet beauty like the night. Howard, I've asked her not to do that. <laughs> Leslie and I do research together at the university. Oh, wow, a girl scientist. Yep, come for the breasts, stay for the brains. <laughs> so, I'm glad I ran into you. The physics department string quartet needs a new cellist. What happened to Elliot Wong? He switched over to high-energy radiation research, had a little mishap, and now the other guys are uncomfortable sitting next to him. <laughs> so, are you in? Yeah, sure, why not? Great. We rehearse on Tuesdays at your place. Why at my place? Yeah, the Department of Energy said our regular space is kind of a hot zone. <laughs> nice meeting you. Yeah, you too. Leonard, I didn't know you played the cello. Yeah, my parents felt that naming me Leonard and putting me in advanced placement classes wasn't getting me beaten up enough. If you're into music, I happen to be a human beatbox. Really? I'm actually not that into music. So hey, your friend's really cute. Anything going on with you two? Leslie? No. Oh. What, are you kidding? He asked her out once. It was an embarrassing failure. Thank you, Sheldon. Oh, I'm sorry. Was that supposed to be a secret? Oh, that's too bad. You guys would make a cute couple. Oh, dear. What's the matter? She didn't take my order. How could she take your order when you're too neurotic to talk to her? <laughs> Nevertheless, this will be reflected in her tip. What did Penny mean you'd make a cute couple? Well, I assume she meant the two of you together would constitute a couple that others might consider cute. <laughs> An alternate and somewhat less likely interpretation is that you could manufacture one. As in, oh, look, Leonard and Leslie made Mr. and Mrs. Goldfarb. Aren't they adorable? If Penny didn't know that Leslie had already turned me down, then that would unambiguously mean that she, Penny, thought I should ask her, Leslie, out, indicating that she, Penny, had no interest in me asking her, Penny, out. But because she did know that I had asked Leslie out and that she, Leslie, had turned me down, then she, Penny, could be offering consolation. <laughs> That's too bad. You would have made a cute couple. But while thinking, good, Leonard remains available. You're a lucky man, Leonard. How so? You're talking to one of the three men in the Western Hemisphere capable of following that train of thought. Well, what do you think? I said I could follow it. I didn't say I care. Um. <laughs> okay, if no one else will say it, I will. We really suck at paintball. <laughs> That was absolutely humiliating. Oh, come on. Some battles you win, some battles you lose. Yes, but you don't have to lose to Kyle Bernstein's bar mitzvah party. I think we have to acknowledge those were some fairly savage pre-adolescent Jews. <laughs> no, we were annihilated by our own incompetence and the inability of some people to follow the chain of command. Sheldon, let it go. No, I want to talk about the fact that Wallowitz shot me in the back shot you for good reason. You were leading us into disaster. I was giving clear, concise orders. You hid behind a tree yelling, get the kid in the yarmulke, get the kid in the yarmulke. Oh, hey, guys. Oh, hey, Hello. Betty. Morning, ma'am. So, how was paintball? Do you have fun? Sure, if you consider being fragged by your own troops fun. You clear space on your calendar. There will be an inquiry. Okay. Um, hey, I'm having a party on Saturday, so if you guys are around, you should come by. A party? Yeah. A uh, boy-girl party? Well, there will be boys, and there will be girls, and it is a party. So. It'll just be a bunch of my friends. We'll have some beer, do a little dancing. Dancing? Yeah. I don't know, Penny. The thing is, we're not... Uh, we're really more of a... No. But thanks. Thanks for thinking of us. Are you sure? Come on, it's Halloween. A Halloween party? As in... Costumes? Well, yeah. <laughs> Is there a theme? Um, yeah, Halloween. Yes, but are the costumes random or genre-specific? As usual, I'm not following. 
<laughs> well, he's asking if we can come as anyone from science fiction, fantasy. Sure. What about comic books? Fine. Anime? Of course. TV, film, D&D, &D, manga, Greek gods, Roma gods, Norse gods. Anything you want. Okay? Any costume you want. <laughs> Bye. Gentlemen, to the sewing machines. <laughs> Watch this. It's really cool. <clears throat> call Leonard Hofstadter. Did you say, call Helen Boxleitner? <laughs> no. C call Leonard Hofstadter. Did you say, call Temple Beth Sater? <laughs> no. Well, here, here, let me try. Call. McFlono McFlooney Loo. <laughs> Calling Rajesh Kutrapali. <sighs> oh, it's very impressive. <laughs> and a little racist. If we're all through playing Mock the Flawed Technology, can we get on with Halo Night? We were supposed to start at 8. It is now 8.06. So, we'll start now. Yes, first we have to decide if those lost six minutes will be coming out of game time, bathroom time, or the pizza break. We can split it two, two, and two. If we're having anchovies on the pizza, we can't take it out of bathroom time. Oh, what fresh hell is this? Well, hey, Penny, come on in. Hey, guys. See a Penny, pick her up, and all the day you'll have good luck. No, you won't. Uh, can I hide out here for a while? Sure. What's going on? Well, there's this girl I know from back in Nebraska, Christy. Anyway, she called me up and she's like, hey, how's California? And I'm like, awesome, because, you know, it's not Nebraska. And the next thing I know, she's invited herself out here to stay with me. Eight, oh, eight. <laughs> anyway, she got here today and she's just been in my apartment yakety yakking about every guy she slept with in Omaha, which is basically every guy in Omaha. I'm washing the sluttiest collection of underwear you have ever seen in my bathroom sink. Well, is she doing it one thong at a time or does she throw it all in? <laughs> like some sort of erotic booyah bays. He really needs to dial it down. <laughs> So if you don't like this Christy, why are you letting her stay? Well, she was engaged to my cousin while she was sleeping with my brother, so she's kind of family. <laughs> yeah, I apologize for my earlier outburst. Who needs Halo when we can be regaled with the delightfully folksy tale of the whore of Omaha? <laughs> oh, I don't think she's a whore. No, yeah, she's definitely a whore. I mean, she has absolutely no standards. This one time she was at... Where's Howard? Bonjour, mademoiselle. I understand you're new in town. Oh, good grief. Um. Damn you, WalletNook.com. Problem? But the online description was completely misleading. They said eight slots plus removable ID. To any rational person, that would mean room for nine cards. But they don't tell you the removable ID takes up one slot. It's a nightmare. Okay, now, do you really need the Honorary Justice League of America membership card? It's been in every wallet I've owned since I was five. Why? It says keep this on your person at all times. It's right here, under Batman's signature. <laughs> and this is Leonard and Sheldon's apartment? Guess whose parents just got broadband. <laughs> Leonard, may I present, live from New Delhi, Dr. and Mrs. V.M. Kutrapali. Hi. Tilt up the camera, I'm looking at his crotch. <laughs> Sorry, Baba. Oh, that's much better. Hi. Hi. <laughs> and over here is Sheldon. Hi. He lives with Leonard. Oh, that's nice. Like Harun and Tanvir. No, no, not like Harun and Tanvir. Such sweet young men. They just adopted the cutest little Punjabi baby. Yeah. No, we're not like Harun and Tanvir. <laughs> so are you boys academics like our son? Uh -huh. Yes. And your parents are comfortable with your limited earning potential? Not oh, yes. at all. <laughs> Papa, please don't start. Oh, it's just a question. He's so sensitive. OK, that's my life. That's my friends. Good to see you. Say goodbye. Bye. Bye. Wait, wait. <laughs> Before you go, we have good news. Put the computer down and gather your friends. What is it, Papa? I don't see your friends. Is it just me, or does web chatting with your clothes on seem a little pointless? Rajesh, do you remember Lalita Gupta? 
The little fat girl that used to kick me in the samosas and call me untouchable? Yes, well, now she's a dental student at USC. So we gave her your contact information. Why did you do that? You're 26 years old, Rajesh. We want grandchildren. But, Papa, I'm not supposed Lalita's to... Lalita's parents approve the match. If you decide on a spring wedding, we can avoid monsoon season. A spring wedding? It's up to you, Davy. You don't want to meddle. Okay, if you don't want to meddle, then why are you meddling? If I may, your parents probably don't consider this meddling. While arranged marriages are no longer the norm, Indian parents continue to have a greater than average involvement in their children's love lives. Why are you telling me about my own culture? <laughs> you seem confused. <laughs> sorry, Mommy, Papa, but with all due respect, I'm I really sorry, can't darling. go through... We have to go. Doogie Hauser is on. <laughs> Grandma, it's Doogie time. Bye bye. Bye bye. I don't believe it. Neither do I. Doogie Hauser's been off the air for like 20 years. <laughs> Actually, I read somewhere that it's one of the most popular programs in India. It might speak to a cultural aspiration to have one's children enter the medical profession. Uh, I bet you're right. I bet they love scrubs. What's not to love? <laughs> Excuse me, hello. My parents are trying to marry me off to a total stranger. What am I going to do? I suggest you go through with it. What? Romantic love is the basis for marriage, has only existed since the 19th century. Up until then, arranged marriages were the norm, and it served society quite well. It's the entire premise of Fiddler on the Roof. I'm not a big fan of musicals, but I love that show. Me too. Of course, it speaks to me culturally. Understandable, but there's a universality to that story which transcends ethnicity. Well, let's not forget it's got some really catchy tunes. Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, I know what I'm gonna do. What? Find new friends. <laughs> So who wants to rent Fiddler? No need. We have the special edition. <laughs> well, maybe we are like Harun and Tenvir. Um, okay. The X-10s are online. Gentlemen, I am now about to send a signal from this laptop through our local ISP, racing down fiber optic cable at the speed of light to San Francisco, bouncing off a satellite in geosynchronous orbit to Lisbon, Portugal, where the data packets will be handed off to submerged transatlantic cables terminating in Halifax, Nova Scotia, and transferred across the continent via microwave relays back to our ISP and the X-10 receiver attached to this... Lamp. <laughs> Look at me! Look at me! I've got goosebumps! <laughs> Are we ready on the stereo? Go for stereo. Realize what we just did? Yeah, you turn your stereo down with your laptop. Uh, no, we turned our stereo down by sending a signal around the world via the internet. Oh. You know you can just get one of those universal remotes at Radio Shack? They're really cheap. <laughs> uh, no, no, you don't get it. Um, uh, Howard, enable public access. Public access enabled. Boy, that's terrific, but I'll see ya. No, no, hang on, hang on. <laughs> <gasps> See? No. Someone in Sejuan Province, China, is using his computer to turn our lights on and off. Huh. Well, that's handy. Um, here's a question, why? Because, because we, we can. can. <gasps> they found the remote control cars. <laughs> Wireless webcams, wave hello. The monster truck is out of Austin, Texas, and the Blue Viper is being operated from suburban Tel Aviv. You may want to put on slacks. What? Ew, stop it. No, leave me alone. Who's running the red Corvette? That would be me. No, see, the liquid metal terminators were created in the future by Skynet, and Skynet was developed by Miles Dyson, but that future no longer exists due to Dyson's death in Terminator 2. 
Okay, then riddle me this. <laughs> Assuming all the good Terminators were originally evil Terminators created by Skynet, but then reprogrammed by the future John Connor, why would Skynet, an artificial computer intelligence, bother to create a petite, hot 17-year-old killer robot? <laughs> Skynet is kinky? I don't know. Artificial intelligences do not have teen fetishes. Oh, oh wait, they use it to lay on Adam. Too late, I win. <laughs> What the hell is that? I don't know, but if cats could sing, they'd hate it too. You wanna prowl, be my night owl. We'll take my Hey guys! Hi! Where are you going? What? Uh, we just had to mail some letters and throw away some chicken. Guess what just happened? Oh, I give up. <laughs> I don't guess. As a scientist, I reach conclusions based on observation and experimentation. Although, as I'm saying this, it occurs to me you may have been employing a rhetorical device, rendering my response moot. <laughs> what was that? Believe it or not, personal growth. <laughs> what happened? All right, remember when I auditioned for that workshop production of Rent, but I didn't get it and I couldn't figure out why? I have a conclusion based on an observation. No, you don't. <laughs> no, he doesn't. <laughs> Well, the girl they picked to play Mimi, she dropped out and they asked me to replace her. Oh, congratulations. What a lucky break. It's not a big deal. Just a one-night showcase, but they invite a lot of casting people and agents, so you never know. I think I know. No, you don't. <laughs> he doesn't. It's this Friday at 8. Do you guys want to come? No. <laughs> because, uh, Friday, we are attending a symposium on molecular positronium. I think that's a week from Tuesday at 6. No, it's this Friday. At eight. Oh, too bad. Well, I gotta get to rehearsal. See you guys. See ya. Let's go out tonight. You just lied to Penny. Yes, I did. But you did it so casually. No rapid breathing, no increase in perspiration. So? So lack of a physiological response while lying is characteristic of a violent sociopath. Sheldon, are you worried about your safety? No. I imagine if you were going to kill me, you'd have done it a long time ago. That's very true. Checkmate. Oh. Again? Obviously, you're not well suited for three dimensional chess. Perhaps three dimensional Candyland would be more your speed. Just reset the board. It must be humbling to suck on so many different levels. Hi, guys. Hey. Did you get my mail? Yeah, right here. How was Nebraska? Well, better than North Dakota. <laughs> I guess that joke's only funny in Nebraska. From the data at hand, you really can't draw that conclusion. All you can say with absolute certainty is that that joke is not funny here. Boy, it's good to be back. <laughs> How's your family? Oh, it was the worst trip. Everyone got sick over the weekend. Sick? Here we go. <laughs> what kind of sick? Oh, uh, the flu, I guess. I don't need you to guess. I need you to know. Now, when did the symptoms first appear? Uh, maybe Friday? Friday. Was that morning or afternoon? I, 
I don't... Think woman who blew their nose and when. Sheldon, relax. She doesn't have any symptoms. I'm sure she's not contagious. Oh, please. <laughs> if influenza was only contagious after symptoms appear, it would have died out thousands of years ago. Somewhere between tool using and cave painting, Homo habilis would have figured out to kill the guy with the runny nose. Penny, you'll have to excuse Sheldon. He's a bit of a germaphobe. Oh, it's okay. I understand. Thanks for your consideration. Now, please leave. <laughs> You'd better go before he starts spraying you with Lysol. Okay, well, thank you for getting my mail. No problem. Welcome home. <sighs> what? Here's the problem with teleportation. Lay it on me. Assuming a device could be invented, which would identify the quantum state of matter of an individual in one location and transmit that pattern to a distant location for reassembly, you would not have actually transported the individual. You would have destroyed him in one location and recreated him in another. How about that? Personally, I would never use a transporter because the original Sheldon would have to be disintegrated in order to create a new Sheldon. Would the new Sheldon be in any way an improvement on the old Sheldon? No, he would be exactly the same. That is a problem. So you see it too. Dr. Hofstadter, Dr. Cooper, Dr. Dr. Gablehauser. Gentlemen, I'd like you to meet Dennis Kim. Dennis is a highly sought-after doctoral candidate, and we're hoping to have him do his graduate work here. Graduate work? Very impressive. And he's only 15 years old. Not bad. I myself started graduate school at 14. Well, I lost a year while my family is tunneling out of North Korea. Advantage, Kim. I thought maybe you boys could show Dennis around, let him see why we're the best physics research facility in the country. I already know you're not. You don't have an open science grid computer or a free electron laser. And the string theory research being done here is nothing but a dead end. Excuse me, that is my research and it is by no means a dead end. Well, obviously you don't see it yet, but trust me, you will. <laughs> Dennis, we've discussed this. We're in the process of updating our equipment and we welcome your input on our research goals. And we've agreed to look the other way if you want to use up to 20% of the grant money you attract to smuggle your grandfather out of Pyongyang. <laughs> We want him here, boys. Make it happen. Yes, sir. You can count on us. We're on it. What the hell do you mean, dead end? I mean, the whole landscape of false vacuums and string theory could be as large as 10 to the 500th power. In addition, ooh, look, chocolate milk. I sense a disturbance in the force. A bad feeling I have about this. Mm. Um, ooh, more details about the new Star Trek film. There's going to be a scene depicting Spock's birth. I'd be more interested in a scene depicting Spock's conception. <laughs> oh, please. For Vulcans mating, or if you will, pon far, <laughs> it's an extremely private matter. Still, I'd like to know the details. His mother was human, his father was Vulcan. They couldn't just conceive. Maybe they had to go to a clinic. Imagine Spock's dad in a little room with a copy of pointy ears and shapely rears. <laughs> <laughs> How come on Star Trek, everybody's private parts are the same? No alien lady ever told Captain Kirk, hey, get your thing out of my nose. Hi, can you help me? I was writing an email and the A key got stuck. Now it's just going, ah! What'd you spill on it? Nothing. Diet Coke. And yogurt. A little nail polish. I'll take a look at it. Gentlemen, switching to local nerd news, Fishman, Chen, Chowdhury, and McNair aren't fielding a team in the University Physics Bowl this year. You're kidding, why not? They formed a barbershop quartet and got a gig playing Knott's Berry Farm. Wow, so in your world, you're like the cool guys. Recognize. <laughs> well, this is our year. With those guys out, the entire Physics Bowl will kneel before Zod. Zod? Kryptonian villain, long story. Good story. Well, count me out. What? Why? You want me to use my intelligence in a tawdry competition? Would you ask Picasso to play Pictionary? 
Would you ask Noah Webster to play Boggle? Would you ask Jacques Cousteau to play Go Fish? Come on, you need a four-person team. We're four people. By that reasoning, we should also play bridge, hold up a hoppa, and enter the Olympic bobsled competition. Uh, tickets to that, please. Sheldon, what? Do I need to quote Spock's dying words to you? No, don't. The needs of the many... Outweigh the needs of the few... Or the one. Damn it, I'll do it. Uh, well, this sandwich is an unmitigated disaster. I asked for turkey and roast beef with lettuce and Swiss on whole wheat. What did they give you? Turkey and roast beef with Swiss and lettuce on whole wheat. <laughs> it's the right ingredients, but in the wrong order. In a proper sandwich, the cheese is adjacent to the bread to create a moisture barrier against the lettuce. <laughs> they might as well drag this thing through a car wash. I don't believe it. I know, it's basic culinary science. Uh, some guy is auctioning off a miniature time machine prop from the original film and no one is bidding on it. A time machine from the movie The Time Machine? No, a time machine from Sophie's Choice. Boy, Sophie could have used a time machine in that movie. Did you see it? It's rough. Oh, that's cool. Uh -huh. It's only $800? Yeah, and that's my bid. You bid $800? Uh, it was a spur-of-the-moment thing. I figured it would go for thousands, and I just wanted to be a part of it. There's only 30 seconds left in the auction. Do you have $800? Not to blow on a miniature time machine. Well, don't worry. The way these things work is people wait until the last second to bid, and then they swoop in and get it. It's called sniping. 15 seconds. Come on, snipers. <laughs> 10. Nine, eight. Where are your snipers? Five. Snipe. Four. Snipe. Three. Snipe. Two. Snipe. One. Ah. Oh, congratulations. You are the proud owner of a miniature time machine. <laughs> you lucky duck. I wonder why no one else bid. This is a classic piece of sci-fi movie memorabilia. Yeah, I know. But I still can't afford it. Why don't we share it? We'll each put in 200 bucks and we'll take turns having it in our house. A timeshare time machine. I'm in. Sheldon? What, need you ask? I still don't understand why no one else bid. I understand why no one else bid. On the other hand, some physicists are concerned that if the super collider actually works, it'll create a black hole and swallow up the Earth, ending life as we know it. What a bunch of crybabies. No guts, no glory, man. Hey, check it out. The School of Pharmacology is looking for volunteers. We are testing a new medication for social anxiety, panic attacks, agoraphobia, and obsessive compulsive disorder. Why would they be looking for test subjects here? I don't know, Raj. Maybe the comic book store doesn't have a bulletin board. What's going on? Shh, hot girl in Sheldon's office. Sheldon's office? She lost? I don't think so. I followed her here from the parking lot. Maybe she's his lawyer. Oh, she's free to examine my briefs. Oh, I know, I'm disgusting. I should be punished by her. Oh, look, I did it again. That should do it. Thank you for coming by. Hello. Oh, hey, buddy. <laughs> buddy. Sorry, I'm late. I'm working on a project that may take me up on the next space shuttle. How can you be late? I wasn't expecting you at all. Nobody ever expects me. Sometimes you just look and BAM! Howard Wallace. Sheldon, are you going to introduce us? Oh, all right. Uh, this is Missy. Missy, this is Leonard and Rajesh, and you've already met Howard. It's nice to meet you. Me too, as well, also. Yeah. <laughs> so how do you two know each other? Oh, he once spent nine months with my legs wrapped around his head. <laughs> Excuse me? She's my twin sister. She thinks she's funny, but frankly, I've never been able to see it. It's because you have no measurable sense of humor, Shelley. How exactly would one measure a sense of humor? A humor-mometer? 
Well, I think you're delightfully droll. Or as the French say, très drôle. Okay, so let me see if I got this. Leonard, uh -huh. Howard, and... I'm sorry, what was your name again? Got you, Sheldon. Look at this Come on. on. Completely smooling. Uh, hey, guys, guys, some of the other waitresses wanted me to ask you something. Uh, it's called tressling. It combines the physical strength of arm wrestling with the mental agility of Tetris into the ultimate sport. Yeah, that's terrific. But what they wanted me to ask you is to cut it the hell out. All right, come on, guys. Come on. Happy birthday to you. We might as well stop. It's a stalemate. You're beating me in Tetris, but you've got the upper body strength of a Keebler elf. Keebler elf? I got a Keebler elf right here. Okay, it's a stalemate. So, Leonard, will we be seeing you on Saturday for your free birthday cheesecake? He can't eat cheesecake. He's lactose intolerant. Okay, he can have carrot cake. What about the cream cheese frosting? He can scrape it off. <laughs> Forget about the cake. How did you know that my birthday's Saturday? I did your horoscope. Remember, I was going to do everybody's until Sheldon went on one of his typical psychotic rants. For the record, that psychotic rant was a concise summation of the research of Bertram Forer, who in 1948 proved conclusively through meticulously designed experiments that astrology is nothing but pseudoscientific hokum. Blah, blah, blah. Typical Taurus. <laughs> so seriously, are we going to see you Saturday? Uh, I don't think so. Why not? I don't celebrate my birthday. Shut up. Yeah, you do. Well, it's no big deal. It's just the way I was raised. My parents focused on celebrating achievements, and being expelled from a birth canal was not considered one of them. <laughs> That's so silly. It's actually based on very sound theories. His mother published a paper on it. Well, what was it called? I hate my son, and that's why he can't have cake? It was obviously effective. Leonard grew up to be an experimental physicist. Perhaps if she'd also denied him Christmas, he'd be a little better at it. Thank you. Well, I love birthdays. Waking up to Mom's special French toast breakfast, wearing the birthday king crown, playing laser tag with all my friends. Yeah, see, that's what kids should have. Actually, that was last year. So you've really never had a birthday party? No, but it was okay. I mean, when I was little, I'd think maybe my parents would change their mind and surprise me with a party. Like this one birthday, I came home from my cello lesson and I saw a lot of strange cars parked out front. When I got to the door, I could hear people whispering and I could smell German chocolate cake, which is my favorite. And? Uh, it turns out my grandfather had died. Oh my God, that's terrible. Oh, it was kind of like a birthday party. I got to see all my cousins, and there was cake, so... That's the saddest thing I've ever heard. You think? Go ahead, tell her about your senior prom. Wolderzing <laughs> shit Sheldon. No, it's Wolderming's it shit Sheldon. Wolderming's it shit Sheldon. What's this? That's what you did. I assumed as in a number of languages that the gesture was part of the phrase. Well, it's not. Why am I supposed to know that? As the teacher, it's your obligation to separate your personal idiosyncrasies from the subject matter. You know, I'm really glad you decided to learn Mandarin. Why? Once you're fluent, you'll have a billion more people to annoy instead of me. Hey, Medu Luiza. You just called Leonard a syphilitic donkey. My apologies, Leonard. I'm only as good as my teacher. Why are you learning Chinese? I believe the Szechuan Palace has been passing off orange chicken as tangerine chicken, and I intend to confront them. If I were you, I'd be more concerned about what they're passing off as chicken. I need to use your window. Oh, hey, yeah, no, sure. Go ahead. Hey, jerk face, you forgot your iPod! What's going on? Oh, I'll tell you what's going on. That stupid, self-centered bastard wrote about our sex life in his blog. <laughs> Drop dead, you stupid, self-centered bastard! 
Thank you. Okay, where were we? Not now. I have a blog to find.